We live, we love, we serve. We live, we love, we serve. Amen. Listen, this last Sunday morning service of 2023, and I want to lift a, a verse from the book of 1 John. This entire year of 2023, our mantra has been, I am unstoppable. And we're going to end the year reminding ourselves of that today. So 1 John, the fourth chapter, and let me pull it up here. 4 John, the first chapter, or rather 1 John, the fourth chapter, my apologies. 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses, well, verse 4. Let's start there. I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard Version as well as the Message Bible. 1 John 4 and 4. And here's how it reads, beloved. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And then in the Message Bible, it reads this way. My dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You have already won a big victory over those false teachers. For the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. Come on, beloved, let's, let's pray. God, we thank you today. God, we thank you today. As we approach the end of another year, we gather in deep gratitude. For the truth is, oh God, no matter what this year has brought our way, we are here. We are alive. And we made it to this point. God, we made it because your presence, your provision, your power in our lives is real. And so, God, as we come to the end of this year, we also come to a season of thankfulness. Thank you, God. For there were things that this year brought our way that we did not expect, but you were with us. Thank you. There were obstacles we faced this year that we did not anticipate, but you were with us. Thank you. There were losses we encountered this year that we could not have planned for, but you were with us. So thank you. In other words, oh God, no matter what arrived, no matter what developed, no matter what emerged in 2023, there was one constant that we could depend on. You were with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because the knowledge of your presence has been strength for our souls. The knowledge of your companionship has been encouragement for our journey. Thank you. Thank you. Because in some of the darkest moments of 2023, the one thing we knew for certain was that you were there. And oh God, because we knew that you were there and are there, we also know this. It's what grandmother used to say. Because we knew you were present, you walked with us. You talked with us. You reminded us who we were along this journey. And for that, again, we say thank you. Now, oh God, let your word do its work. Let your word have its way. Let your word 
touch the fragile places in our spirit that we might be enlivened today. We love you, God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. I want to read those that verse again in the New Revised Standard Version and in the Message Bible. 1 John 4, verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The Message Bible says, 1 John 4 and 4, My dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You've already won a big victory over those false teachers. For the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. In the King James Version, although the language is not inclusive and it is dripping with patriarchy, you may be more familiar with that phrase, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Beloved, no matter where you are this morning, do me a favor and just simply tell the person next to you, I am an unstoppable force. I am an unstoppable force. Amen. No matter where you are, just take a seat. I am an unstoppable force. Beloved, I won't be long today. But I just want to remind those of us who have journeyed through 2023. Yes, the mantra was I am unstoppable, but you need to know that you are an unstoppable force today. I wish I could take credit for that title, but that title is actually the title of a book written by the pastor of the Mosaic Church in Los Angeles, California, Erwin McManus. And the book that he wrote was called An Unstoppable Force. Erwin McManus was talking about the church being an unstoppable force. The church that understands its purpose, its identity, its work, its meaning. That when the church of God the same church that honors the teachings of the carpenter begins to move in this world, that that church, that body, those people become an unstoppable force. That phrase and those words from the time I read McManus's book have always stayed with me because I too am convinced that when we who are part of what Paul called the body of Christ, those who are part of these gatherings, this fellowship, but those of us who have made a commitment to God, and not only the commitment to God, but a commitment to honor the teachings of the carpenter, yes, when we embrace that, embody that, believe that, live through that, walk in that, operate with that knowledge, we do become an unstoppable force. But here in this passage in 1 John, the writer of 1 John is speaking to the community of believers, speaking to those who've made a commitment to follow the ways of the carpenter. And what the writer of 1 John is reminding the people who have just come through a season of having to emotionally, spiritually, psychologically work against what the writer calls false teachers. He has to remind them, and the writer rather has to remind them, that false teachers will always abound. False teachers who are trying through the mechanisms of, quote, unquote, the church, use those mechanisms to undermine the movement. Some forms, and in some translations, they refer to these false teachers as part of being the Antichrist. But in the Message Bible, they refer to as false teachers who are trying to undermine the power of the movement by leading the people in the direction of ideas and beliefs and even doctrine that are counter antithetical to the movement of this Jesus people. And so he's reminding them not only will false teachers arrive, but that they've already defeated false teachers in their past. That they've already had people who've tried to siphon their strength, undermine their spirit, tried to co-opt the Jesus movement, and they were able to survive those false teachers in the past. And the writer of John is letting them know that even when those new false teachers arrive and, and those new attempts arise to try to thwart the movement by leading them astray to different beliefs, again, that are antithetical to the teachings of the carpenter, that they can survive that. He tells them in that fourth verse, you've, did it before, you've done it before, that there'll be false teachers who 
have come and will come again. But he reminds them, one, you've already been victorious in the past when they've come. You've already won those battles. You've already won those victories. And so here it is. He's just basically telling them that what? It's something we already know. If you've been victorious before, you can be victorious again. And then when he says that, no, don't forget that if you've overcome these false teachers, you've overcome these attempts to undermine the movement, and you've done it before, you can do it again. And then I can hear, almost feel the writer understanding that that doesn't always work to me. There's still some people who no matter what you tell them, no matter how much you remind them that you've come through this before, you'll come through it again. You fought this before, you'll fight that again. You've been victorious before, you'll be victorious again. That's all the time. That knowledge of prior victory does not always strengthen us and undergird us in the moment of current fighting. That knowledge doesn't always strengthen us in the moment of a current struggle, a current battle, a current crisis. It should work that way. In the best world and the best case scenario, we would never be overwhelmed by new adversaries, new challenges, new moments. Because why? We have a history of victory in the past. We've done it before. We've seen God moving, moving us before. We've seen God staying with us before. And we've gotten a victory before. And you would think that that knowledge of being victorious before would strengthen us, but it does not work that way. And sometimes we are just frail human beings who oftentimes allow our fear, trepidation that arises with a new challenge to get the best of us, and we don't always remember. Years ago, I remember reading an article that said what happens to us when fear arises in our lives, sometimes we develop something called spiritual amnesia. We forget what God has done before. We forget the ways we've gone before. We forget the victories we've had before. We can't get past the current crisis and moment. But the writer almost anticipated people not being convinced by this reminder, and he then gives them another reminder. Let me tell you why you'll be victorious. Let me tell you why you'll overcome in this season. Let me tell you why you can handle any false teacher, any adversary. He says this, because the Spirit of God that is in you is stronger than any spirit, any power, any force within the world. That the force of God, the power of God, the spirit of God, that ruah, the breath of God that is in you is stronger than anything outside of you. Not only is the writer of 1 John reminding them of their track record of victory, but he's already and also reminding them of how strong they are, not because of their own strength, but because of the inherent strength connected to the power and spirit of God that is working through them and in them and with them to allow them to overcome anything that could rise in their life. Greater is the Spirit of God in you than any spirit outside of you, any force outside of you. And since nothing can stand in God's way, and since nothing can stop God's power, if that power that is unstoppable with God, is residing in you. You and I are an unstoppable force. That's why I can say I am an unstoppable force, not because of my own strength, but because of the power of God working, moving, living, breathing, within me. Oh my God. I am unstoppable because God is unstoppable. I am an unstoppable force because the force that galvanizes and activates and ignites the universe is in me. That's why I am unstoppable. That's why we are unstoppable. That's why we each can declare, I am an unstoppable force. But then there's a caveat to this. Some of us began this year thinking with our mantra, our theme, I am unstoppable, and we automatically began to think of all the things we have to do. What we have to do to demonstrate that we can't be stopped 
Think about the plans we made at the top of 2023. Think about the goals we had set for ourselves. And we heard this mantra. We began to tell ourselves that, that, that we are unstoppable, that nothing will stop us from achieving our goals, from achieving our dreams, from making our vision come to fruition, that nothing will stop us. Why? Because God is in us. The power of God is guiding us. And then we begin to move with that. But do not confuse God's unstoppable force with being forceful. I hope you can get that. You see, there are some powers that can only exert power by force to overpower, to dominate. In fact, the history of humanity is, is, is littered with the corpses of people who had to sit under those powerful forces or regimes. That there have been systems in the history of humanity who thought that power came by force, not who thought, who still think. If we did not still think that, there would not be wars in this world. If we did not think that you exert your power through force, that you exert your domination through force, we would not be seeing images and pictures of bombs going off in different parts of the world from Israel to Gaza to Africa to the Middle East. You name it, you can see those who believe that the way to reign supreme is through the exertion of force, power. And when it even gets more dangerous is when there are those who exert that force and power in the name of Jesus. But this is not the force I speak of. I do not speak of the force and power we use to destroy, dominate, oppress, and conquer. I speak of the force that is at the heart of who we are. The heart of who we are. I want you to hear what I just said. The heart of who we are. We are galvanized right now, each and every one of us, those who are watching right now. What allows us to be alive is this unstoppable force. It is the force that activates our heartbeats. It is the force that allows the blood to flow through our bodies. It's the force that allows the organs to work in concert and in orchestra. It is the force at play that allows you to put one foot in front of the other. All those things that are inside of you that contribute to the powerful you you are that activate your humanity, that activates who you are. It is a force. It is unstoppable, but it is not forceful. The heart does not beat you to bless you. The organs do not terrorize you to function. They are force that just moves quietly, and, and you don't even hear the power and the rush of the blood through your body. You feel the heartbeat, but it doesn't intimidate you or scare you, and yet it is the most powerful force within you and just moves right along. That is the essence of the force I speak of. It is the kind of force you have and the power you have when you are so comfortable in the nature of who you are and the power you possess that you don't have to will it over anybody, lord it over anybody, and dominate anybody. That you are so comfortable and calm with the force you have and the force you are. You just be who you are. You just are who you are. That you don't have to make things happen. You trust that because of who you are, what? Things will happen. You don't have to try to connive. You don't have to try to contrive. You don't have to scheme. You don't have to plot. Just show up as your best self and let life just move as it is, and you play your part. You don't even need a timetable. You sit around sometimes, and we sit around at times and think to ourselves, I have to get this done uh, in two years. If I don't accomplish this in three years, it won't really mean much. If I don't get this goal in three years, and four years, it won't happen. If I don't do it next week, it won't manifest itself. That's us trying to monopolize the movement of the force. 
thinking that somehow the powerful force that is within us that is shaped by God is on some type of timetable that we orchestrate. And then we think that somehow God is obligated to honor our agenda, honor our vision, honor our mission, honor how we want things to show up. But no, and then many of us get frustrated because the plans we have, the things we want to put together, the structures we put in place, we think that that guarantees the the arrival to the destinations that we desire. But what happens when you don't have to force your way to a place, you just arrive in the space. Go deeper. What happens when the things you are pursuing, you don't have to pursue because those things are pursuing you? What happens when all you have to do is consistently be yourself and watch how life falls into place? Oh, those false teachers that the writer of John was speaking of are not always people. Well, yes, they are people, but let me go deeper. What if the primary false teacher that you can encounter are the whispers from within where you are the false teacher to yourself? What happens when you begin to listen to the narrative that you construct connected to your desire to make things happen? What happens when you start falling victim to your own whispering words that tell you because of external realities, you got to be this and you have to be here and you must possess this? What happens when you allow your voice to be shaped by the many voices and then the many voices tell that one voice you what you ought to be and then you lose a sense of your own voice because you now are trying to sound like the voices that remind you of the dreams you have to get and the vision you must bring to fruition and the goals you accomplish and pretty soon the false teacher is not the people who are with outside who are outside of you the false teacher is you speaking to yourself when was the last time the problem you struggled with was negative self-talk when was the last time that the issues you wrestled with was always talking yourself out of your best moment what happened when the last time and the last false teacher you met had a voice that sound just like yours because you talk to yourself a lot about what you need to do, how you need to get it, where you need to be, or who you are not. No, when you live and breathe in that unstoppable force that is within you, that is stronger and greater than any force within the world, well, the first thing you realize is you don't have to waste your days proving you're unstoppable. Because the minute you got to prove you're unstoppable, you've just stopped yourself. I hope you get that, beloved. I hope you get that, beloved. The minute you have to prove you're unstoppable, you have just stopped yourself. Because the unstoppable force never has to prove, it just is. How many of us have wasted our energies, our precious energy, feeling we need to prove that we were unstoppable? Why? Well, I won't go down that rabbit hole too far, but I got to tell you that we all know what it comes from. It comes from insecurity. It comes from this deep sense of unworthiness, this, this deep abiding sense of inadequacy where you always got to show, you have to demonstrate, you got to prove, you got to show that you have money, you got to show that you have opportunity, you got to show that you have things. No, when you're comfortable in your own skin, the idea of proving is the greatest waste of time that you can ever engage in. When you spend any amount amount of time trying to prove who you are. But when you are convinced and convicted by who you are, you never spend energy trying to show who you are, demonstrate through you are who you are. You just simply move through this world with a quiet confidence, realizing that everything that is supposed to arrive your way will arrive. And everywhere you're supposed to be, you will be. And everything that's supposed to happen will happen. I am not speaking of passively sitting by and letting life pass you by. No, I'm speaking about courageously engaging life, knowing that you don't have to make certain things come to pass. I know that is counterintuitive to this culture that tells you you got to make it happen. If you don't chase it, it won't happen. Yeah, okay, but I don't think that's the way this unstoppable force moves. It doesn't move saying, go get it, 
grind, break your neck, hustle for it. You do whatever you can do because if you ain't doing it, somebody else is going to get it. If you're not achieving it, somebody else is going to go after it. And pretty soon, the need to prove yourself shifts from having to prove yourself to compare yourself. And then it moves from having to compare yourself to feel the need to compete with everybody around you. So you went from proving to comparing to competing, and you never get closer to the thing you desired because you've been proving, comparing, competing. It must sound like a chorus of dysfunction to your ears. Proving, comparing, competing. Let it sit in your spirit for a second and think how you have disjointed yourself trying to prove. You have undermined yourself trying to compare. That you have lost yourself trying to compete. No, that, tri that, that, that triumvirate right there of, of, of proving, comparing, competing has been more destructive than hate, more destructive than, than dysfunction, more destructive than war. Proving, comparing, competing. That's our culture. Prove your value. Compare yourself to other people. Compete for what you need. And pretty soon, the more you prove, the more you compare, the more you compete, the less you are of who you're supposed to be. Because you've been busy, what? Proving, comparing, competing, and missing who you are. But that is not the unstoppable force. The unstoppable force and the person who's convicted by the unstoppable force within them realize that you yourself, one, bear no obligation to prove yourself to anybody. You don't prove yourself, you be yourself. And then the unstoppable force within you realize you don't have to compare yourself with anyone because of this one word. Are you ready for this, beloved? It's called this. It's where you can stand flat-footed in the midst of who you are, in the authenticity of your own skin, and say this with boldness, confidence, and courage. You know what? I am incomparable. No one is like me. Nobody has what God has given me. That I walk in this world as a unique manifestation of God's creativity. And I have a place in this world. I have a role to play. And the only role I play is a role I've been given. And there are parts of this world that will not come alive if I don't play my role. But how can I play my role when I'm comparing myself to someone else's role? And why would I compete? I bleed like you, I cry like you, I hurt like you, I shout like you, I laugh like you, I celebrate. Why would I compete with another human being who's endowed with the same image of God that I bear? So when I prove, compare, compete, I lose myself. I weaken myself. I lessen my power. And it shows I don't believe that I'm unstoppable. I realize that one of the greatest forces in this world is water. I remember years ago, and I used to be infatuated with martial arts and Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee had this line and quote that people use all the time, and he said, be water, my friend. And it sounds so strange, be water. But man, you understand what it means. Water is unstoppable. And it doesn't exert anything. It just flows. Oh, God, you'll get this. What makes water so powerful is that no matter what you put in its way, it finds a way around it. It doesn't have to tear it down. If you put a boulder in the middle of a river, the river doesn't destroy the boulder, it keeps on flowing. But the longer it keeps on flowing, it wears down that boulder. But it doesn't stop its flow to attend to the obstruction. Oh God, I hope you get that, beloved. It doesn't stop its flow to attend to what's in its way. Because the minute it stops its flow, it's no longer an unstoppable force. Oh, God. It just flows. The water just gets to where it needs to get. 
And just when you think it's arrived, it keeps on moving. It keeps on moving. I got to tell you a story, beloved. About eight years ago, I had a leak in my truck. And, and, and I didn't attend to the leak because it was in the middle when I was running for Congress. And, and every day, that, every time it rained, I would come to my car and I would look on the driver's side and my mats would be wet. Clearly, there was a leak somewhere. I couldn't see it. The mats would be wet. The carpet would be soaked every time it rained. I never tended to it. I didn't get it fixed. I, I waited. I waited because I was busy campaigning. When the campaign was over, I decided to take my vehicle to get service to get the leak fixed. I dropped it off that morning and I had a loan a car and they said they would let me know by the end of the day what was wrong. And so the service, the man who was doing service and servicing the truck, he called me that afternoon and he said, he said, Mr. Warren, I think you need to call your insurance company. I said, why? He said, I think they're going to write your car off as a total loss. I said, wait a minute. It's not been hit. There's no structural damage. The engine is functioning. What is what is wrong? He said, well, in your truck, a lot of the electrical circuits sit under the driver's side. He said, and the water damage, right, has gone down into the electrical circuits. So you may have noticed a few shorts, and I did, of some things. He says, now here's the thing. He says, I can see the damage, but I can't see it all. Watch this. Because I can't see everywhere the water has flowed. You, you, you got to get that. He said, because if you can see some damage, there's more than what you can see because the water will move until it can settle. Oh, God. I hope you get this. He said that I can't see everywhere the water has flowed, but I know from what I've seen, it has already damaged what is coming its way. Man, I hope you get this, beloved. I hope you get this, beloved. Because here it is, nothing else in the car was wrong. Nothing was wrong with this car. It could drive, it could do everything. But because of the entrance of water that was always trying to settle, it tore up the electrical circuits of this car. And water didn't have the agenda of destroying the circuits. Water just flowed. It flowed through the crack in the window. It flowed down the window. It flowed down the side. It flowed to the floor. And when it saturated the floor, it kept on flowing through the floor down to the electrical circuit. And it kept on going till it got to the bottom. But everywhere the water went, it damaged what was in its way. And it was not part of the water's agenda. It just flowed. The water did not enter my car saying, I'm going to total out Mike's car. The water did not say that I'm going to flow with the intention of destroying the electrical circuit. The water did not say my plan is to saturate the mats and the carpet. The water just flowed. And in the flowing of the water, all sorts of things started happening. The water had no agenda, but it changed my agenda. You'll get that later. The water had no agenda, but it changed my agenda. The water had no intent, but it changed everything I had to do. But here's the crazy thing to me. Here's a deep thing. Well, what role did I play in relationship with the water? You're not going to get, I'm, let me go ahead and really be transparent this morning. Let me really be transparent. We had saved for my children's college from the time they were little. Now, you may be saying, Pastor, what does this story have to do with what you're talking about? Let me help you. We had been saving and saving because we knew we wanted to take care and pay for our children's college. My son went off to college first. He took a little bit longer than we anticipated, right? But he went to college first. And here it is. The longer he anticipated, this is the thing, his deep. That was an extra year that we didn't anticipate for the savings. We had the money determined based on the possibility of both of our children finishing in four years. Now, my son and my daughter then overlapped longer than they should have because of my son's extra year. So that there became an extra year where we had to use now funds for two instead of one. So now we were entering, you're going to get this. We were about to enter my daughter's, right, her junior year. And the funds were dried up. It was the summer before the junior year. 
And now we got to think, well, we could get the money. And, you know, Spelman, the second semester, usually lets you get a payment plan. The first semester, though, this is the key. The first semester, you had to pay it all in full. We were not able to pay it all in full the first semester for two kids. We could do the payment plan because that's what he did. In full the first semester, payment plan the second semester. And we had done that for the years. But now we got to a point where we couldn't have it all to pay full for two for the first semester of that year. Rather, my daughter for the first semester of that, of that year. All right? You got to watch this part, Tamisha. Well, we had been aggressive. This story is going to live for somebody. We had been intentional. When I got my car, I didn't lease it. I bought it. It was on a four-year plan, and we paid it off in three because I didn't want to carry that note. I hope you get this. My car was only three years old, and they were telling me now it was being totaled. I called the insurance, like the man said. And when I called the insurance, the insurance adjuster went to look at the car. The insurance adjuster saw the car, called me back, and said, yes, we're writing this off as a total loss. I said, what does that mean? He said, it means that I'm going to give you a check for the value of the car. Now, what he didn't realize is that my car was paid off. So there was no one else to pay off. So then I said, what is the amount that you're going to give me? He said, call me tomorrow after I make the adjustment. When I called the next day, he said, Mr. Waller, I'm going to write you a check for $47,000. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All of a sudden, money there for the first semester. Why? Because the water flowed. Oh, God, you'll get this in a minute. That if the water had not flowed, I thought it had damaged something. But it created an opportunity that I needed. Why? The water just did what the water knew to do. It just flowed. Be water, my friend. This is the lesson of Bruce Lee. That when you are unstoppable force, you don't have to bully your way. You don't have to dominate your way. Just flow with the rhythm of life. Don't have to prove, compare, or compete. Just flow with the rhythm of life because you don't know what that flow will initiate. You don't know what just being you will orchestrate. You don't know what just showing up in your authenticity will do. You don't know the doors that will be open. The opportunities will be created because here it is, like the water, when you flow, just be you, you become an unstoppable force. This is a lesson I've learned, beloved, in my life. I have learned the secret to effortless power. That I don't have to force things. I don't have to bully my way through things. I don't have to kick down certain things. Just be who God called me to be. Just flow with a natural rhythm of my life. We all have that rhythm. The key is, can you stop talking to yourself long enough to hear it and feel it? Can you stop trying to prove yourself long enough to settle in it? Can you stop comparing and competing so much to honor it? We all have a flow. We all have a rhythm. Why? Because greater is the Spirit of God within us than the Spirit and power that is in the world. You and I have the power of God within us. God doesn't bully the universe to let the sun rise. It just happens. God doesn't terrorize the universe for the moon to rise. It just happens. Why? Because we move in a natural flow and rhythm of life. That is the lesson, beloved. You and I are unstoppable forces. That means truly nothing can stop us. But if you believe that, you don't have to prove that. Just be you. Just be you. The 
somebody saying, so, Pastor, do I just be me and sit there and do nothing? No. No. Mm -mm. Be you and move with the natural rhythm and flow of your life. Because the water doesn't just sit. It flows. It moves. It the ocean, it flows. The river, it flows. The creek, it flows. Here's the deep thing. We had a bad storm here last week. Rain and wind. I got to the church that morning and I came and the volunteers for breakfast before books were out there. I remember later on that day, Deacon, one of our deacons came and he had a video, a video of how that morning after the storm, the water, the water had flooded, came over the curb, was by the front of the church. Watch this. By the time I got there, you couldn't even tell that happened. They were telling me about how it looked, not how it was looking. Why? because the water just kept flowing. And what seemed like a problem was no longer a problem because when the water was flowing, it didn't stop. It kept on moving. Ah, beloved, I know there are different seasons in your life that arise, that are challenging, that present certain situations that seem like obstruction or obstacles like the water. Don't attend to the obstruction. Don't get sidetracked by the obstacle. Just flow. Attend to the natural rhythms of your life and live in the unstoppability of your being. Come on, beloved. Let's pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you so much, oh God for reminding us, oh God, that we truly are unstoppable. Not because we're forceful, but because your power in us is greater and stronger than any power in the world. God, thank you for this reminder. God, that we are so powerful that we don't have to prove ourselves, that we are so powerful we don't have to compare ourselves, and so powerful that we don't have to compete with anybody. In fact, the only thing, oh God, that some of us may be competing with is who we were on yesterday, but who we're going to show up as today. God, thank you. Thank you for this reminder today that each of us, we are each an unstoppable force. And because of that, we can just be and live the life you created us to live. Thank you, God. We love you, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. And we say, amen. Amen, beloved. Listen, I want to thank you for the journey we've taken these 52 weeks this year. I pray that 2023 was a year where you truly found out how unstoppable you were, not by proving, not by comparing, not by competing, but by just being your authentic self. As we prepare for the dawn of a new year, let's take that knowledge with us and no matter what comes our way, We've been victorious before. We'll be victorious again. Why? Because we each are an unstoppable force. Listen, beloved, don't forget, tonight, tonight, be here in the building at 9.30 p.m. Doors open at 8.30 p.m. Make sure you get here to get your seat as we end 2023 and look into 2024. Our theme for 2024 is... Uh, I was going to say it. No, be in the building tonight to get the theme for 2024. Listen, beloved, until tonight, hopefully I'll see you tonight, either in person or watching us on stream. Until tonight, much love, peace, and many blessings. Have an amazing day.